In this tutorial, we'll take a look at the basics of programming in Microsoft Access with Visual Basic for Applications Programming Language, or VBA. And before we get into actually writing some code, it's important to understand some of the basic concepts behind VBA. Although VBA is not a full object-oriented programming language, like C++, it does share some of the same basic concepts. And the first is that most everything we work with in VBA is considered an object. That means that all of our forms, reports, fields, queries, even the access application itself is considered an object. Now, the reason that's important is because most objects provide to us a consistent set of what are called members. Objects provide to us properties, methods, and events. Taking a look at one, each one of these uh, one at a time, properties of an object are things that control or affect the way the object usually looks or behaves. So for instance, the background color of a form would be considered one of its properties. We can change properties programmatically in our code to change the way that the object looks or appears to the user or the way that it behaves. Methods of an object are actions that we can call on the object to make it do something. So for instance, we can move a form on the screen by calling its move method. Lastly, events of an object are a way for an object to tell us that something is happening with it. So for instance, when a form is being closed by the user, the form's close event will fire off, letting us know that something's happening in the application. We can then write code in response to that event happening. Most of the code that we write in VBA is in response to an event of an object occurring. Taking a look at a real world example, if we look at a, a phone and think about the properties, methods, and events of a phone, some properties of a phone might be the ringtone the phone is currently using or the wallpaper that we set on the background of the form or, I'm sorry on the background of the uh, phone. Some methods that we might use of the phone or actions that we can take would be to dial the phone or to answer an incoming call. And some events of a phone might be the phone ringing or the phone being shut down. Now in response to those events we might want to actually do something like call one of its methods. So for instance when the ring event occurs we might want to call the answer method. Likening that to one of the objects in Access, again taking a look at a form, some of the properties of a form might be again the background color of the form or the caption of the form which is the title that appears in the title bar. We can change those programmatically in our code. Some methods that we might call on the form might be the close method to shut down the form or the move method to move it on the screen. And then again, some events that might occur on the form. When the form first opens up in response to the user opening it, a load event occurs to let us know the form is being loaded up into memory and displayed on the screen, and we can write code in response to that. And lastly, a resize event might occur of the form. When the form is being resized by the user on the screen, we might want to take some specific action. There are literally hundreds of properties, methods, and events that we have access to, and they're normally specific to the type of object that we're working with. So the properties, methods, and events of a form are different than the properties, methods, and events of a report. We'll take a look at some of the basic properties and methods that we have access to as well as events of a form in this tutorial, but obviously there's a lot more to learn. Alright, so let's take a look at writing some basic code in response to some events occurring on a form. I have a database open in Access 2007 and I have a form called FRM Retailer that I'm going to open up in Design View. I'm going to display the property sheet for the form and on the property sheet I'm going to go to the events tab. And you can see that there are quite a few events that occur on a form and these events again give us an opportunity to write code in response to them occurring. Now as a real simple example we're going to go to the forms on load event. And this is one of the events that occurs when a form is first brought up on the screen. Now to write some code in response to this onload event happening, I'm going to go over to the build button, which is the small button with the three dots or the ellipsis on it, and click on it. And I'm going to choose the code builder. When I do that, it takes me into the form load event in my code window in VBA. Um, Microsoft Access and VBA have written a shell for me here and it's up to me now to just put the code in that I want to have run when the form loads up in memory. 
Access will take care of the rest, firing the event off and running the code in response to my event. So again, I'm going to do something very simple here. I'm just going to change the caption property of the form. And the way that we refer to this form in memory is by its name, which is form underscore FRM retailer. And when I hit a dot, you'll see that VBA gives us what's called IntelliSense. And IntelliSense automatically displays for us the properties and methods that are available for this form. As I go through the list, you can see that properties are displayed using what looks like a hand pointing down to a box, and methods are displayed by a green block that looks like it's flying through the air. As you can see, there are quite a few more properties than there are methods, but as we scroll through the list, we will find some methods, like go to page, or the move method that we talked about earlier. In this case, I'm just going to change one property of the form called the caption property, which changes the title that appears in the title bar of the form. Okay. Once I have my code in, I'm going to switch back to Microsoft Access. And to do that, there's a button on the toolbar at the very far left that lets us toggle back and forth between Access and VBA. I'll switch back to Microsoft Access and now we'll go into form view of this form which will fire off the load event and we'll change the caption of the form which we can see has just happened. All right, let's take a look at one more example this time for a button. I'm going to go back into design view of the form and select the close button that uh, is on the form currently and take a look at it, it, its events. You can see that there's quite a few fewer events for a command button than there are for a form and the one we most often focus on is the on click event, which happens just when you think when the button's clicked by the user. Again, I'm going to click on the build button and go into the code builder to write some code in response to the button's click event being fired off. Again, the wrapper is created for me, and all we have to do is fill in the code. Now, in this case, I'm going to say that when the user clicks this button, I want to close access as a whole. Now, remember, access the application is an object itself and we refer to it by saying application. You can see also that there's a consistent syntax that we use when we're accessing the properties or methods of an object. It's always the object name, dot, and then the property or method that we're calling. Now in this case I'm going to be calling a method and the method is called quit. Whenever we use a method of an, of an object, we don't set it equal to anything because we're not changing a value, but instead we're calling the method. Methods sometimes require what are called arguments, which are just additional pieces of information that Access might need in order to invoke that method or run it uh, in the way that you want it to. So after we type in the name of a method, we always hit the space bar uh, on the keyboard to see if there are any arguments that are required. Arguments that are required, uh, or optional I should say, arguments that are optional show up with square brackets around them. Like you can see that uh, this argument that it's asking me for called option is optional meaning I don't have to provide a value, there is a default value that will be used. If the square brackets were missing from this argument, it would be required and my code wouldn't be able to run unless I pro uh, provided a value for it. Now, one of the other features of IntelliSense is that when we come to a situation where it is asking us for an argument, oftentimes it will pop up and provide us with a list of choices so that we don't make any mistakes in providing a value that isn't valid. You can see the, the uh, choices for the quit method are that we prompt the user to ask them if uh, they want to save the work that they've done or that we automatically save everything that's been done or that we don't save anything that's been done. I'm going to prompt the user so I'll select that value and I uh, selected that just by highlighting it and hitting the tab key on my keyboard. Okay, we're all good. I'm going to switch back to Microsoft Access, go back to the form and form view, you can see that the load event fired off when the form first came up and it changed the caption of my form. And now I'm going to click on the close button and you'll see that the prompt will appear asking us if we want to save the changes that we made and I'll click yes. So in this example we saw some of the basics of using VBA code, the fact that all access objects have properties, methods, and events that we can use to write code and affect either the way the object looks or appears or behaves or call methods of an object to make it do something in response to an event occurring in our application.